Oh yes, it it was crazy. Um, you know, um, I have family in Japan. Like they're my mom and my dad. They kind of adopted me. And the last time I saw them was in March. And so they said, "We have a surprise for you. We're coming to Germany." And I'm like, "Yeah." So they came over to spend Christmas and New Year's with me. And then on Christmas time, like on on 24, my manager called me up. He said, "Hey, you have to sign this deal, and they they have big plans for you." And you have to go to Japan. I'm like, you're kidding me. Like my family came all the way to Germany mm. and now I have to go over. Um, yeah. So that was a little bit not so good, but then uh, of course, you know, it turned out really amazing. I had a great time. I met a lot of amazing people there and I did something that changed my life forever. I guess I challenged a beast. <laughs> yeah. So your parents are Japanese or they are um, German? Well, they're like my best friends. Like I don't have like real parents. Like I'm adopted and stuff when I was a baby. So I don't have a real parent. So when I found them, you know, like when I came first time, it was 2012 when I went to Japan. I met them. um, He's a wrestler too. And his wife, she's she's German. Um, And we just get along. So amazing you know just we love each other and then they, they have little kids and i love them like brother and sister so they kind of adopted me <laughs> yeah okay so um yeah you, you go to japan how did this whole deal get uh go down it was your your manager somehow arranged it for you or did you know somebody in japan because you were wrestling there or well to be honest when i first saw um what's the match when i saw ryzen and there was gabby garcia against lady tapa oh right I thought, oh, who is that girl i mean i know lady tapa from my wrestling um we were a team together in tna impact yeah and so i thought wow she's so super how you say fearless she's so brave to facing this gabby garcia girl and i was like what is this? I want to do that too, you know? And then I saw Gabby facing this Russian girl and it was so bad. Like the fight was just so one-sided. Gabby was so much stronger. And then there was this Destiny girl, I think. And I was like, what's going on in Japan? Like, seriously, I want to face this Gabby girl. And that was like, I don't know. I had this crazy idea to do this. So my manager, like, there was this guy, he called me up and he said, hey, I heard that you're interested in MMA. And I'm like, well, not really. I'm a pro wrestler. I have nothing to do with MMA. And he said, yeah, but, you know, you can try and it would be interesting. And I was at that time, that was like, I think beginning of 2016, I was like a little bit bored with everything. And as I told you, the wrestling wasn't as great as it should be. And I said, you know what, just, you know, I can try. And then this guy who is now my manager, he set me up with a fight in Germany. I fight the Manuel Manuel Acuse was her name, mm-hmm. and he set up this fight for me, and then he gave me like really good context to a really amazing training school where I'm at the moment, the Planet Eater team, and then there was this fight. First, I hated my manager, and I said like, this is not fun, <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts a lot, but then I had another fight, uh, it was actually K1, not MMA. And I had so much better chances because I learned more. I learned more how to protect myself and I got less hit. So it was a little bit more fun. So I said, yeah, let's do it. And then me and my manager, we agreed that I will do like about five or six uh, matches before we actually face or challenge Gabby. But, you know, when you make a plan, things always work out differently so Ryzen called up and said hey you want to fight this girl and to be honest my trainer and my manager and basically everyone is really concerned because you know she's a strong and she's experienced and this is not easy to take on you know and I see so many people on my on my social media they, they say oh are you going to die and this is not wrestling or what are you doing and I respect Gabby, really. She's a world-class athlete, and but I have to take a chance. It's a one-in-a-lifetime chance, and I will train hard. I have three or four, five, six months. I don't know. Let's see when the fight will happening. But I think I do what I know. No, I know what I do. That's the way. <laughs> and there's other girls facing her before who were less experienced than I. I mean, look at this last opponent Gabby has. The 
50 how old she was oh my god i yeah i think the first girl was was in her early 50s and i think that halta was maybe 49 or 50 so yeah like look at her they survived you know i think it was a little bit nasty from gabby garcia to punch this old lady in the face she could have easily just grabbed her and put her in a submission hold you know like i don't know like i was live there i saw it i was like you just do this you know like i don't I don't even know what that old lady was thinking, bouncing off the road. <laughs> I, I don't know. But I thought it was really nasty from Gabriel Garcia that she punched this woman in the face. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know, I man. I don't know if I would have done different, but my heart says I would have. Because, I don't know, it's an old lady. You can't do that. That's like hitting your mom. You would never do that, right? I don't know. Um, I, I think that this, you know, Hata knew what she was getting into. She's had MMA fights before. Um, and obviously she was a last minute, you know, substitution for this other girl. So uh, I can't, I don't know. Can, can you explain her behavior in this fight anyway? Well, as you say, I guess she knew that she has no chance. And I think, you know, she wanted to have as much airtime, TV time as possible and bouncing up <laughs> the ropes gave her like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, um, in Japan, everything is so different. The MMA product, Ryzen, it's so different. You see fights you would never see in any other um, company. And right. I guess that makes it so interesting because everything can happen. And yeah, there's a wrestler bouncing off the ropes and getting hit by a big, huge woman, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, there were other fun fights too. And for example, this Andy girl, she's dancing like super sexy down the, you know, the way. And I don't know how they do it. Like when I, when I go to a fight, I'm like super focused. Yeah. There's no dancing or anything. So I don't know. Like it's, it's so different. It's so cool. And the cup noodles walking around and... <laughs> <laughs> so much fun stuff you can see only in Japan, you know, so I'm really happy that I can work with them and at the weigh-ins, for example, they dress up and it's so funny, the one girl has a Pikachu. Oh my girl, God. Like a dominatrix, like, well, what the hell? That's so cool. So yeah, I will definitely think of something too when I go to the weigh-ins, you know, and you know, that's entertainment and they love entertainment and they love stuff differently and of course it's fighting you have to be in the zone you have to in the end you have to protect yourself as much as possible but having a little bit of show somehow i don't know how <laughs> it's a little bit important there so like, like I, for example you lose but you lose in a really good way like losing like for example when you go to ufc or other companies if you have like two losses or something they never book you again but right. in japan if you really show a lot of heart and like kind of a samurai spirit i think you can lose forever but they will still get you back there as as long as you're entertaining and as long as the fans love you hmm. so are you just planning on being entertaining or are you planning on going in there and winning oh definitely winning like this this is the goal like i really want to beat her ass <laughs> i want to be the strongest woman on this planet and i have to be her to be that um, yeah, I also want to show, I don't know, I want to show people that she's not unbeatable. Like, at the moment, they put her, like, like a queen, like a god, like she's the strongest and no one can beat her. Everybody, everybody can lose, you know? Like, look at Ronda Rousey. Um, Holly Holmes beat her and no one ever expected that. And now Amanda beat her, you know, because she's not, un, you know, she, everybody can be beaten, you know? It's just a matter of time I guess so how do you plan on doing this because you know obviously she's much bigger than you I, I obviously I, th I think there must be no weight limit in this fight first <laughs> of all right yeah I think there's no weight limit yeah but she's not so much heavier than I I mean she had to make weight for this fight to face Hotterson and I think they met at 90 kilo or something mm-hmm so I'm at the moment 95 kilos, so that would be not a problem. Oh, I okay. even can go up to 100. And and Gabby is, I think, 110 usually. That's like your normal weight. Yeah. So it's not a problem. And she also has a really strong uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu pedigree as well. She's a black belt, so... Uh, mm -hmm. 
I would guess that your best bet would be to try to stand up with her, right? Definitely. Like it, it would be stupid for me to go down and try to beat her down there. On that, that's not possible. But I cannot tell you my game plan now because you know maybe she's listening to your podcast too. <laughs> so yeah, but I will. I have something up my sleeve, and I would not take the challenge if I would know up front that I will lose. You know, I'm not stupid. You know, um, of course I had put me put many thoughts in it and I trained a lot and I, I know I can do it like my trainer would never ever let me go to Japan if he thinks that this would be a danger to my body you know okay so of course yeah it will be fine <laughs> I, I you know it's a 50 50 chance right both can lose both can win so I guess everybody just have to turn on the TV or best way come to Japan and check this out and see if there's history written, you know, yeah. of course it can be for me, it can go all wrong, but at least I had a good time. You know, I had, a, I can see my friends again. I can spend some time in Japan again because I really love Japan. It's amazing. Um, and I have just a good time, you know, like the training I take very serious. I would, I would bust my ass every day, but when the time is for the fight, there's nothing you can do. You can just rely on the hard work you put in and, hope for the best you know yeah and yeah let's see <laughs> so it, it's it must be hard for um for her and and for you to find fights right because you know in, in this weight class i don't know how many girls there are who are you know ready to compete and it seems like you know they're there's trying to scratch up opponents for her by actually looking for pro wrestlers you know like you mentioned they put lady tapa in there with mm-hmm. her now they've got hota and now you so um, is it is it difficult for you to find somebody who wants to fight with you and who's the same you know experience level and 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 uh, and everything like that? Yes, definitely, it's hard to find. I mean, there's a there's a website for MMA women. Um, I uh, sorry, I don't know the name of the website, but they're only focusing on women MMA, and they put up a list of all the heavyweights, you know, and it was like six girls worldwide. So that's not a lot, you know. <laughs> like my manager also said, like Jesse, please don't expect a big career in MMA because there's no much, there's not much, you know, opponents as you just said. And yeah, of course there are some girls, but they need a lot of training. Um, most of these big girls, they just rely on 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 the fact that they're big, but there's not much to back up. Mm. Um, yeah, and to be honest, I'm not the youngest anymore, you know, um, I guess that's like kind of my last run. I will do maybe five more years with wrestling and with MMA, um, and I don't know how much more girls will come, but, you know, for me, it's not important to compete so much and winning and all that stuff, but to show also that big girls, first of all, that big girls can be freaking beautiful, you know, and that that big girls can be strong and big girls can be fighters too. Because when you look at the other MMA, like UFC, for example, they only have these skinny girls and small girls. And, you know, you have to have it all. I mean, I see the same in wrestling. There was a hard time for me to find opponents. I'm maybe in wrestling, we are like three or four big girls, you know. So it's not just hard in MMA to find strong, like over 80, 90 kilo girls. So... Yeah, I hope there will be more because it's always like you have to be skinny to be beautiful. You have to be skinny to be successful. But no, just be who you are and, and embrace it. You know, don't be ashamed to be big and don't hide. I know a lot of bigger girls and I don't mean necessarily like fat girls. I mean like big girls just right. the way they're bold, you know, and they're hiding because they think they're not feminine or they think whatever, you know, because in school they get bullied and I don't want that anymore. I want the girls to, hey, look, I'm this. I can be a dancer. I can be a model. I can be an MMA fighter. I can be whatever I want to. So that's kind of my message I want to put out there. And first of all, or most important, be fearless. You know, mm-hmm. go out there. Yeah, I just I just challenged the biggest opponent in my life. Yeah. You know, let's, let's see, you know. <laughs> like, am I scared? Well, no, not really. But I definitely have respect for her, you know, and that's, a, that's a big difference having respect and being scared yeah. of course you should have respect for every single one who steps in the cage I have respect for you know but don't be afraid 
Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, if you look at it, though, there some of the most successful females in wrestling have been bigger girls. I mean, China arguably mm -hmm. was the most successful, you know, female wrestler ever. And then yeah. uh, Beth Phoenix also had quite a bit of success. But I think MMA is a little bit different in that regards. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just my opinion. But I think that they do offer uh, some more opportunities to the girls who fit that um, typical kind of cover girl kind of a look. Yeah. I mean, look at Cyborg. She's fighting for it that there yeah, exactly. a higher weight class. And I hope she will be successful with it. Like, really, I wish her all the best with that. She's an amazing fighter, and she should not be hauled down, you know, just because of stupid weight limit. So are you going to have time to train for this fight with all of your wrestling bookings? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I will move in a few days, actually. And right now I'm in Hamburg, Germany, but I will move in a few days to my Planet Eater team. Um, and then I will train day and night, and on the weekends I have my wrestling stuff. So yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> it's no problem at all. And you know, everyone is really supportive. Like even the, the people I'm booked at at the moment, they say if you need free time, if you need off, it's no problem. Just tell us on time so we we can find another girl, you know, to fight at my place. So yeah, everyone is really supportive, and everyone knows that this also helps the wrestling community, you know, because. Um, I'm champion at few different promotions, you know, and whenever people talk about me, they say, hey, this is Jazzy, the alpha female, and she's champion here, champion there. So it helps them too, you know. So it's really great that my fans and the promoters are so supportive. Okay. Yeah, this whole, um, when you challenged her, it really had a whole pro wrestling kind of a feel to it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, talk about how that went down. Like, did somebody approach you with that idea, and was it kind of uh, scripted like that? Did Gabby know what was going on, or was it all just kind of impromptu, or how did it happen? I mean, you know, like the people, like some people attack me actually on on the social media, and they're like, "Ah, oh, what were you thinking?" And then I'm asking. I'm asking you and, and everyone who's listening this question, do you really think I pay my flight to Japan that costs about, what is it, like 900 euros? Do you really think I pay my flight? Then I pay my, my hotel and then somehow I just can jump into this ring? Like, don't you think there's security or, you know, don't yeah. you think someone would have hold me back? So of course someone invited me and of course they told me to go in and make this challenge, you know? <laughs> and of course they invited me and yeah Gabby didn't know about anything the, the Japanese girl didn't know anything you know it was a big surprise for all of them and yeah it was a surprise for the fans and nobody really expected it and I kept it as a secret I knew that this was happening um, and yeah they told me please be as entertaining as you can be and you know make some waves because they have boring already they don't want boring they want entertaining they it's Japan, you know. They they love their pro wrestling. They love Yoshi pro wrestling, like the female pro wrestling. Yeah, and it has to be like that, you know. You can't be so boring, you know. You have to you have to make something that people talk about, you know. So of course, they wanted me to be a little bit like making it like a pro wrestling promo. Do you think that Gabby would make a good pro wrestler? Ah. Uh, I don't know her so well, to be honest. But that what I know, I would say no, not at all. And I, I, I like now I'm in both worlds, right? I'm in the pro wrestling world and in the MMA world. And the the pro wrestler people say to me, "Oh my God, how you can do MMA? Like this is so hard and this is so dangerous." On the other side, my MMA people say, "How the hell can you do pro wrestling? This is so dangerous. This must hurt like hell." <laughs> so like. <laughs> You guys are so funny. Um, and uh, yes, pro wrestlers have a hard time to adapt to MMA training, but also MMA wrestlers have a hard time to be pro wrestlers. So both sports are so different from each other and have their own, how you say, they're so difficult in their own way, you know? So, yeah, I don't know if she can be a pro wrestler. She, she would be an attraction, definitely. And I know some wrestling promoters would love to have her on the show. But I don't know if she can pull off, you know, like, I think she's a very serious person. And whenever someone says something to her, she will take it personally. Mm. But in wrestling, it's show, you know, when I say I'm going to kick your ass, I maybe don't mean it like that. <laughs> 
So yeah, I don't know.